Alright, so it's been 30,000 miles since I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT and I've got this folder full of maintenance and mods and everything I've spent so far on my 2019 Mustang GT. Hey guys, welcome to Red 5 Today we're going to be talking about 30,000 mile ownership review of my 2019 Mustang GT. I did get this car in August of 2019 before all the craziness happened with the pricing. So I was able to get a good deal. I'm kind of glad I got it when I got it because now it's almost impossible to get these for any discount. Most of the dealers are doing MSRPs. So since I've had it, it's been three years now and I just crossed 30,000 miles, a little over 32,000 miles now um, because with all the S650 Mustang launches, I just didn't have time to make this video. So we got 32,000 miles on the clock right now. So it's averaging about 10,000 miles a year. So in this video, I want to go over, you know, some of the maintenance I've had to do, some of the reliability concerns I've had with this car, the build quality, how it's been holding up for 30,000 miles, and all the mods I've done so far on, on this car. With that being said, let's dive right into the video. I honestly can't believe it's been three years since I've had this Mustang GT. I've done some mods on it, not much, but we'll go through the mod listing very quickly. Uh, I've been debating whether to you know, upgrade to the 650 Mustang or keep this and just build a lot more on this. Um, as you can see, there's not many cosmetic mods, but I think I'm leaning towards just building the S550 Mustang I currently have. Because one, S650 Mustangs are probably going to be very expensive uh, from the get-go with the dealer markups and all of that. And you can't tune them, at least not yet. So I don't want to, you have know, waited three years to get this Mustang and now I'm finally ready to start modding it. I want to get the S650 and wait another few years before I can really tune it and modify it. Alright, so we'll start off with the first mod I did to this 2019 Mustang GT. Um, it's going to be on the back basically and that's the exhaust I got. I got the Corsa Extreme Active Exhaust tips basically. It retains all the factory active exhaust features. You've got your quiet, sport, and track modes. When I first got the active exhaust, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I think it's been a love-hate relationship because the upgrades were so expensive to do. Uh, but now that I've experienced quiet mode, and not annoying my neighbors, I think it's kind of worth it. Next up, I did get a 20% tint all around. Um, I did not get my windshield tinted. I'm actually debating, maybe I'll go, I don't want to get in trouble with the cops. It's a red car, definitely don't want to have any issues. So maybe I'll go, I don't know, 50%, 60%, something like that, just to get a little bit blacked out look. But I love the way the tint really brings this car out. I mean, it's, you've got the tint here, you've got this painted roof. It does come with the black accent package, as you can tell from the spoiler and the wheels. So the whole look really matches up by having the tint. So I got the regular tint, nothing fancy. It's not, you know, special carbon or ceramic tint, just the regular tint. And the next mod I did, well, I guess this is one of the, I don't know if you can really call it a mod. I did get the Red 5 sticker to be able to kind of advertise the channel a little bit at the car meets and stuff. Um, but anyway, the next mod I did is actually on the interior, which is the paddle shifters extension as you can see i've got the red ones i do have a link of these in the description if you are wanting to buy these um, they work really well they've been i've had them for about a year or so they've held up pretty good um, i actually like using them i definitely am a fan of these the only thing is like i'm considering i might remove these because while i like the functionality of the paddle shifter extension they're just i feel like a little too red for me now even though i like them in the beginning because i like the whole red and black theme going on I don't know, I'll see. I definitely don't wanna try to take them out and mess up something. And then one thing that I don't currently have on yet, I did get the GT500 spoiler. It's been sitting in my garage. I just haven't had the time to install it. So right now I still got the stock spoiler, but that is gonna be going away pretty soon. We're gonna have the GT500 spoiler. I'm really excited to be doing the mod. I'm gonna try to tackle it by myself, which is why I feel like it's been just kind of sitting there for too long. But I feel like it's really gonna make the car look nice. And then next up on my list is gonna be, you know, doing some of the lowering springs and maybe get a tune. All right, so the build is coming together slowly. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you are subscribed. I'm gonna be doing a lot more mods in this car. Um, now let's talk about some of the maintenance, right? A lot of people have the perception it's got a big V8. Is it expensive to maintain? Is it like German cars or is it not even reliable? Um, all these questions get asked constantly for the Mustangs. And if you're in the market for the Mustang GT, hopefully my maintenance breakdown will help you kind of get an idea how much it costs to maintain the Mustang GT. Okay, so the car has 32,000 miles. I've gotten five oil changes so far. I'm ready to be on my sixth oil change, which will be very soon. Hopefully in the next week or so, I've been just busy to take into the dealership. I did have an appointment actually last week, but I had to cancel it because I wasn't able to make it due to work. So what have those oil changes cost me? Well, believe it or not, uh, probably around $250. So I'll sum it up at the end of the segment. 
So first three Oceans were actually free because when I bought this car, they were really promoting the Ford Pass. So you got like 40,000 points or something, which was equivalent to getting three free oil changes. But the last one, I had to pay like $14 or something, just the way the pricing worked because the price had gone up. But nonetheless, I mean, first three oil changes were $14. I did get synthetic blend instead of full synthetic because that's what Ford recommended. That's what they were going with. I did get the 5,000 interval instead of 7,500, which is what Ford bases off of their interval based on the owner's manual. Next two oil changes I did have to pay on my own. I did go with the full synthetic, again, 5,000 interval. So the fourth and fifth oil change, the pricing wasn't consistent. The first one I paid like 125, I wanna say, cause that's some coupon. Um, the next time around was like $134. It's about 250 plus that 14. So roughly $270, give or take for the oil change, which honestly hasn't been bad. I mean, five oil changes, full synthetic for two of them, synthetic blend for three of those for $200. $250, not too bad for this. It does take 10 quarts, so if you are doing the oil chain on your own, it does get pricey. Of course, it's gonna be cheaper. I have maintained it through the dealer because of warranty concerns, um, but obviously if your warranty is not intact, then you can definitely go ahead and do the oil chain on your own and just take it to a local shop. Now the car is currently still on stock brakes and stock tires. So as far as the brake, I feel like they've got plenty of life left. Although I do feel like if I'm driving very hard, it gets a little bit heated up as far as the tires i don't know that's one of the things i mean i still got the pirelli's 255 19s um the tread on these seem okay the rear ones are also okay um as you can see right here i want to say they're wearing out about evenly although i have to say on my 20,000 mile review i said i was probably going to keep these tires for a long period maybe 50,000 miles or so i've started noticing that it does seem to lose traction but i've noticed like if i am driving on regular streets and try to get on it, floor it, it will lose traction, it will try to brake. And I feel like that somewhat concerns me because obviously I'm dealing with 460 horsepower. To a lot of people it's nothing, but 460 horsepower is nothing to play with. And if you don't have proper traction, I don't wanna be that Mustang meme. So while I originally wanted to keep the tires for a little bit longer, you know, get a little bit more life out of them, I feel like I'm gonna swap them out for Michelin's. I've been looking it up, I'll probably get three or five on the rear and then front would be 275. The only thing is obviously these wheels are not going to fit. So if, even if I get 19 inch, I'm going to have to swap the wheels. And that's obviously gets very costly. The Michelin tires with the wheels, it's probably going to be like $2,500 or $3,000 depending on what wheels I'm going with. So I feel like that's going to get very expensive. That's why I've been like holding off on it. But I think from a safety perspective, I'm probably going to be ready to swap these out very soon. Now two maintenance items I have not gotten around to just yet, but I will be doing them very soon over the winter basically is the cabin air filter, which was due at 20,000 miles, and the engine air filter, which is due at 30,000 miles. So I barely crossed that one for engine air filter. I'm debating between a drop-in filter or just go for colder intake with the tune. So before, so until I make that judgment call, I'm probably gonna wait off. But let me know if you have any suggestions, you know, using a drop-in air filter versus a colder intake. How much different do you really make? I used to have a GLT colder intake on my 2006 Mustang GT. I felt like it didn't do much power-wise. It just looks cool. So I don't know if I want to spend all that money just for looks. All right, so now let's talk about the reliability. So obviously I've got 30,000 miles. It's still a relatively low mile car, um, but are there any issues? So far, no, to be honest. Um, I've had a couple hiccups here and there, um, but nothing where I would say, you know, it's kind of left a bad taste in my mouth with the car. So when I first got the car, it had some transmission programming issue where it would, if you wanted to kind of get on the car from the 10th gear, drop it six and below, it would do like a harsh downshift. And I had to kind of take it into the dealer. They updated the software, it's been fine since then. Um, I've been developing a third and fifth harsh shift basically. So what happens is if you're in sport mode or even if you're in drive, if it's shifting a third or fifth, occasionally it would do a harsh um, downshift or even upshift. So that's something I wanna, when I take into the dealership next week for the oil change, I wanna bring it up to the dealer, see if they can do a software update if there is one, but nothing that concerns me. I mean, I've been driving it, I get on it on sport mode and all of that, no issues from that perspective. I think other than that, it has been pretty reliable. Of course, 10 speed has its quirks, we know that. I think they updated the software in 2020 or 2021 model year, so those shifting are a little bit better than these basically. So I think I'm okay with it, but that's something I would definitely like to get resolved when I can. Now, next up, I wanna talk about the build quality. That's something Ford has gotten some flag for it. I used to have S197 Mustang GT, and to be honest, I didn't experience many build quality issues, but this one, there are some nuances with this build. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and walk you over some of the issues I've experienced with this one. All right, so I don't know what Ford has done, but the panel gaps on these have been horrible. You've got this one right here. It just looks like, you know, if you look at it from a distance, it always looks like the trunk is open, but that's obviously not the case. The other side of it is more or less good. You know, it's still got a gap here, but it doesn't stick out much further. It aligns well here. This also kind of carries on the front of it. Here you can see it aligns pretty well. But if you go here, you can see this sticks out much further than the other side, the uh, passenger side. So the driver's side basically has this issue. And I'm sure there are a couple other panel gaps. Um, they don't annoy me as much because you don't really notice them unless they're like very bad. But in my case, they're not, so I'm okay with it. One thing that really annoys me about the build quality is actually how thin the paint is. I've got so many paint chips. I feel like every time I go wash the car, I find a one paint chip. And I remember the first one I got, I was so devastated finding one. But now I've gotten so many of them and it's just kind of like, it is what it is. I can't do much about it. This was one of the first few ones I got right here. And I got a big one right here as well. You see right over there. And there's a couple minor ones throughout the body. And I feel like eventually I want to do color correction. But I think for right now, I'm going to leave it as is. Because when it's washed and stuff, you look at it from a distance, you can't really tell that there's paint chips. Now there are a couple build quality issues in the interior. The biggest one is the seat. Every time you try to move it, it makes a creaking noise. I don't know if you can hear it over the camera. It just sounds so bad. I've taken it to the dealer. They've said they can look into it, but they pretty much gave me this felt tape, which I still need to put on, and hopefully that's gonna resolve it. Uh, the other thing is that the speaker grill over here is a little bit loose. You can kind of move it with your finger um, and I feel like right now it's fine but either it could come off or it can develop a rattle which would be really annoying. The interior seats and everything else has held up fine. The leather seats are good. Um, no issues with the steering wheel or any of the trim in the interior. The back seat barely get used but they're also in good condition. So how would I really describe these 30,000 miles I've had with my Mustang GT? Honestly, I have to say it's been a pleasant experience to own this Mustang and that's one of the things I went with the Mustang rather than, you know, the M3s or anything like that. One, of course, they were more expensive, but the reliability and the maintenance, like this 197 Mustang I had, went through, what, 150,000 miles with barely any issues. And the other, there's like plenty of Mustangs on the forums or Facebook pages that are well past 100,000 miles, 150,000 miles. Some of them are even boosted with no issues whatsoever. So I think that's one of the things, they are very reliable cars, you know, the 5.0, the 10 speed and everything. Of course, if you have the MT82 before 2020 model year, you might have some issues. But with the 10 speed, I feel like I have no reservations, you know, recommending this to a friend or, you know, family member to get this Mustang because it's, I feel like it's a perfect package. You get a very fast car that's, you know, cheap to own, inexpensive to own, really, if you think about it, I mean, the oil change costs you $100, the brakes and the tires, unless you're going wider setup, they're not going to be much more expensive than your typical car. I mean, yeah, slightly more expensive, but unless you're going for like a summer tire, the three or five is obviously then you got to pay to play. Anything else, I think it's not all that bad. Of course, reliability. I think that's one of the things like a lot of people don't consider that while the car may put like fast numbers, like if you compare this, this one to like an M3, M3 is going to be much faster, but M3 is one of those cars you don't want to own outside of the warranty because one, Either it's going to be breaking down or you're going to be paying a lot in maintenance just to keep it running. With this car, I mean, knock on wood, haven't had any issues really. I can see this car going to 100,000 miles with just oil change. Unless, I, of course, I start modding it very crazy, um, then I'm going to have to keep up with the maintenance, pay a little bit extra, and, you know, there will be stuff that's going to break. So, I mean, I have to say I personally love this Mustang. Um, I plan to do a lot more on it. So, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe on it. Um, definitely going to be installing the GT500 spoiler. That's already there. I think my next mod is going to be the Loring Springs. I'm waiting for some Black Friday deals to see if I can get something and I'll order those. And aside from that, it's been an amazing experience to own this car, to be honest with you. So if you're in the market for, you know, S550 Mustang or, uh, you know, any Mustang really, I highly recommend getting the S550, especially 2018 and up, which was the refresh model and has the 10 speed and the Gen 3 Coyote, which makes 460 horsepower, will run like 12 second quarter miles while still getting you 26 miles per gallon on the highway, which is absolutely crazy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash that like button. Comment below if you've had your Mustang for a long period. What are your thoughts on it? And as always, subscribe to Red 5.0 for more videos.